Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to change out a driver shot, driver's side CV shaft in an O3 E46 325 XI BMW. So once you get it up in there, take off the wheel on the driver's side, get a jack underneath it, a jack stand underneath the jack point, um, and then you'll take the, the tire off. You'll need to hit the little tabs back on the actual shaft nut and then go ahead and use a 36 millimeter 12 point socket to get it off. It's probably going to be best for you to use the impact if you get if you have one. If you don't, it's going to be pretty hard. Man, it's stuck. It's not even turning at all yet. Go ahead and spray some lube up in here because a lot of times they get rusty and you'll have to bang them out of there. Use a punch, Let's get it in the center here. Start banging on the shaft. Don't bang on the outside because you'll mushroom it and then you'll get it to where you can't get it out. We'll go ahead and turn the steering all the way to the right. Ball joint retaining nut and go ahead and, and remove the nut off the back side there. And I'm using a 18 millimeter but remember yours might be a different size so if it is just use whatever size is appropriate. Now whenever you're taking off the lower ball joint retaining nut Every once in a while I'll get one that I can't get the nut off, it, it hits the CV shaft. If that happens, don't worry, just leave the nut on there and make sure that's loose and then go ahead and start banging on the joint here to get this loose. Once it pops loose, then you'll be able to go ahead and turn that nut on off and get it off. You don't want to be underneath this because a lot of times these just drop down and you don't want to hurt yourself whenever it drops. So we're going to go ahead and hit the joint here with a sledge. Now you can use a fork in here, but most likely you're going to tear up the boot. If you're replacing the lower control arm, then that's fine. Just go ahead and use a boot and whack it with a sledgehammer to get it broke loose. And I meant to say the boot, not the fork. Go ahead and, I mean, <laughs> I meant to say the fork, not the boot. So go ahead and use the fork to get it off if you're going to replace the lower arm and mess up the boot. So I was having a hard time getting anything to break from the other side, so I went ahead and changed the camera view and we're going to hit it from the opposite side. Alright, so I hit it a few times with a sledgehammer, hit it back with the air hammer, and you've seen how it, how it finally broke loose. So even though the bottom is loose and it's coming out, the shaft is still in there. I'm going to have to hit it some more to get it to slide out the back. So once you get the shaft to slide out, you should be able to lift the whole assembly up and out. and you see the shaft right here. So now you'll need to go up underneath and get a fork or a long uh, alignment tool or punch or something to hit the shaft off from the transmission side. So whenever you go to hit the shaft out, just go underneath all the way under. <coughs> and you can see the shaft right up in there that you'll be hitting out. It's kind of hard to see with the camera, but I'm gonna have to put the camera down to, to show you. I'm gonna stick the punch right up in here 
and hit the back side of the shaft to, to knock it off the transmission. So I took the little five pound hammer and had my little punch up in there. And I hit the shaft and you can see the, uh, the gap that's right there where I push it out from the transmission. So now that the uh, snap ring has uh, came out on it, then we'll be able to come back around and go ahead and remove the shaft from this side. Okay, so while you're trying to take out the shaft, have a buddy hold the spindle arm out. Now you can put a pry bar straight through the center here. Just be careful that you don't damage it. It'll help you hold it with attention. The pry bar come out on this side right there. You see the shaft right here and it's completely loose. Now you might want to put a drip pan underneath it so that whatever oil that might come out of the transmission goes in the drip pan. So once you get that loose, then just slide that shaft out like that. So while you have it out, go ahead and check, make sure that seal up in there is good. If it looks torn or anything, go ahead and replace it. This one's good, so I'm not gonna replace it. Take your new shaft, make sure that everything's good on the end. You could put a little bit of grease on the end to help it uh, go in there. But you just slowly lift it up in there, spin it a little bit to get it lined up with the shaft or with the spines. And then, and hit it in there like that. You see that's bottomed, in, bottomed out. Just go ahead and start straightening it up. And, uh, whoever you have helping hold the spindle up, we'll go ahead and start lowering it down. As we're lowering it down, put the end of the shaft into the hole. So once you get the spline in and you know that it is splined up, it might be kind of hard to push it through. As long as everything's straight, just take the whole assembly and just kind of tap it back a little bit. You don't want to tap it back too hard and until you get that shaft to come out enough to go ahead and get the, the nut on there. So whenever you do that, you might have to come underneath with your hand, pull the lower control arm off to get the lower ball joint out of its hole so it doesn't bang up against it and take the whole assembly and just kind of rock it back until you see this come out enough to be able to put the new nut on it. Once that's on there, then you should be able to go ahead and put the lower ball joint into the position and get the uh, retaining nut back onto the lower ball joint. Now, if you're not able to get the lower ball joint nut back on, then you might have to get the jack underneath the lower control arm and lift up on it using the jack to get enough pressure against the ball joint to tighten up the nut. So once you get the lower ball joint tight, go ahead and tighten up your axle nut. Then go ahead and punch in the shoulder on the retaining nut to go ahead and lock it onto the shaft. Now you're ready to go ahead and put your wheel back on. So once you get the wheel back on, go ahead and torque it down the factory specs and you've just completed the install on your driver's side CV shaft. But anyways, thanks for watching my video today. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, like it, share it, leave your comments below. Stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching again.